Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I created a test scene. Uh, this is just a structure that I'm just sort of using as an, as an intro right here, intro diagram. Uh, but I have a, a scene that uh, is available on the DVD uh, that comes with the uh, 3D World, this issue of 3D World. And the scene is called M Maya Demo underscore start on MA. Very simple scene, just has a directional light set up and uh, a camera already uh, in the scene. So I want to start off with quickly by showing you uh, where you can get Molecular Maya. Uh, once, once again, it's a, it's a free plugin. Uh, you can go on the internet in a web browser and go to molecularmovies.org or .com, either one. And once you go to this website, click on the toolkit link. And this will take you to a page where you can download Molecular Maya. Version 1.1 is the latest version as of this writing. In addition to the uh, link for downloading the um, software, uh, there's also a number of video tutorials that show you some of the more advanced features as well as a basic overview. And most importantly, there's a very helpful video that demonstrates how to install uh, Molecular Maya on your machine. And I'm not going to go through that since that's already available uh, on the internet. But once you download and install Molecular Maya and restart Maya, you'll see that there's a whole interface that is added to Maya and uh, it's available as one of the tabs. So normally you have the channel box and the attribute editor. Molecular Maya adds a third tab called M Maya Molecule Editor and you can turn this tab on and off by clicking the little water molecule icon here on the very upper uh, right hand corner of Maya. Uh, so here is the uh, plugin. What the plugin does is it, it gets it, it acquires for you a PDB file and uh, imports that directly into Maya. And then once you have it imported, you can start to play with the different types of visualization available to you. Now, what is a PDB file? Well, PDB files are found um, on a database, an online database, and again, they are also free. The website for this database is www.pdb.org. And uh, when you go there, you'll see that there's actually, uh, this is the protein data bank right here. And it's a vast database where, you know, scientists who have uh, solved the 3D structure of a particular molecule have updated uh, the structure in this uh, simple format, which is called the protein data bank format. It's a text file that contains 3D coordinates for all the atoms in uh, the, the protein structure. So you're actually not modeling the structure yourself. You're, you're essentially importing the actual position of all the atoms in the structure. So uh, you know that it's scientifically accurate, which is great. Uh, the PDB data bank website is very large. There's a lot of stuff here. There are links to articles on various uh, different structures under the molecule of the month, which is a very interesting read. But then there are search features to find uh, a number of different uh, structures. So the data bank itself can be a little bit unwieldy to use if you're not used to working with PDB data. So there's a few features in Molecular Maya that make working with the data bank a little bit easier. You can use Molecular Maya to bypass having to use a browser and just simply uh, import the PDB file directly into Maya without having to go to a web browser or the website or anything like that. The trick is, though, you do need to know the PDB ID um, number, and that's something that um, if you're working with a scientist or someone has commissioned you or is, you know, to do a scientific animation, you need to get this PDB ID number from them at the outset, because uh, otherwise it's going to be difficult uh, to figure out exactly which structure you should use. In other words, if you're looking for DNA or RNA, or something like that. There might be a hundred, two hundred, a thousand different versions uh, in the data bank and you won't know exactly which version you need. So what you do need to do is get that PDB file number. Uh, for this demonstration I already know the, uh, the uh, PDB ID number that I'm going to use. I'm going to clear this out. This right here, this field links to uh, PDBs that have already been downloaded to my computer and I can click on this field and just choose one of these to uh, to basically import it. But what I'm actually going to demonstrate how to to directly di download a PDB file that I haven't downloaded before um, directly into Maya. So I'm going to go down to the download section and the PDB ID number I need uh, I just happen to know is 1CD3. And this brings me to a structure which is actually part of a virus 
and is a particular virus that actually infects bacteria. In other words, uh, E. coli and things like that. So it's kind of an interesting little structure to play with. Um, if I put in the PDB ID number, if I press download, it's going to download the file and put it into the file indicated in this uh, in this uh, directory path right here under local PDB archive. And then I can just uh, click on this field right here and I'll see that ID number appear right here in this field. But another thing you can do is just skip the one extra step and just press the download then import button and this will do everything for you. It'll download the file, place it in this folder and also import it into Maya all in a single step. So I'm going to press this button and uh, it takes a few seconds to download. Of course you have to be hooked up to the internet in order for it to work. And once it downloads you can see here it is in Maya and it's represented as a point cloud. So I'm going to click off uh, into the empty space just to deselect it. I'll press the 6 key so you can see this shows the uh, hardware shaded mode. And you can see that uh, the structure is represented by um, point type particles. And the particles have actually been colored based on the type of atom they are. So red, uh, red for oxygen, uh, black for carbon, carbon, and so on and so forth. You also notice that, that there is a PDB node here in the outliner. And this node actually contains a group, which contains subgroups. And each of these chain subgroups is just a different section of this structure. But when I'm working with molecular Maya, you shouldn't have to go into the outliner and mess with these guys at all. In fact, you, know, you don't have to play with the attribute editor or any of that kind of stuff. All you need to work with is available in the mMaya toolkit interface. And when you download a structure and import it, it automatically switches to this main tab right here. So before I was in the import tab, now I'm on the main tab. And this is where I'm going to do most of my work, choosing a different way to represent um, this structure. You can see here's the PDB ID. And there's even a link here. If I click on this link, it opens up the PDB uh, website directly to the page that's associated with this structure. So this is uh, Procapsid of Bacteriophage PHIX174. Don't really need to know that information, but just in case you're curious, there it is. And there's actually uh, different ways to view it, more information, and so on and so forth. But if you're not a molecular biologist, you don't necessarily need to worry about that stuff. Uh, but it's nice to have that link there, just in case you need it. There's also a different, you know, this summary information right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here in the Molecular Maya interface and start looking at different ways I can represent this. Now if you look at the uh, video tutorials available on MolecularMovies.org, it will go into much more detail about how to uh, work with the different representations. I'm just going to do a quick overview so you get an idea of what it's like to work with Molecular Maya. And then if you're interested, you can go download the plugin, watch the video tutorials, and get more detailed information. So if I go down to the atoms rollout within the Molecular Maya main tab, so I'm in Molecular Maya main, I've scrolled down, and now I'm in atoms. Um, you can see that uh, under edit, I can choose to do all the chains at once or the individual chains. I'm going to stick to all chains for the moment. Under here, I can turn on and off the visualization of the individual atoms, and then I can also choose different representations. So by default it's set to cloud uh, and this is because this is the fastest uh, updating um, representation uh, within the Maya interface. So in case you've downloaded an extremely large structure you're not stuck with waiting forever for it to update as long as display as is set to cloud. But if I switch it over to CPK it's going to switch to uh, essentially the sphere type particle representation of the structure. So now I can see a little bit more detailed information about what the structure looks like. I can actually choose uh, ball and stick and then what you'll see is that the uh, atoms are represented by uh, spheres and then the bonds between the atoms are represented by very simple lines and these lines are actually uh, a particle type, hardware rendering particle type. Uh, within the atoms section I can choose different ways to display both the atoms and the bonds between the atoms using these controls. Uh, in addition to that, you can also choose a separate visualization for what you see in the interface 
and a different re representation for what you see when you actually render the scene. So by default, I have bond v viewport viz set to lines, meaning these individual lines, but the rendering is set to geo. So if I do a quick render, you should be able to see uh, bonds appear. And so you can see now there are actual geometry bonds in between. Of course, the lighting in here is set up for uh, a, a different view, so it's a little bit odd, but you get the basic idea. Uh, if I want to show the uh, viewport rendering as geometry, I can just set it to geo, and now we can see the uh, cylinders in between each of the atoms. But you also notice that the uh, update is much, much slower. As I zoom out, you can see it's a fairly large structure. So to speed things up, I'm going to set this back to lines, and then you can see that it updates much faster. There's also different options for the different ways to render the bonds and the atoms, and they are all displayed right here. So I can change the uh, blobby radius and all that, so on and so forth. And uh, on top of that, there's also some presets here. So if you don't want to mess with those sliders, you want to get something uh, quick going, I can choose, uh, for instance, I'll set the uh, preset to standard pinch. And then if you notice, as I zoom in here, then I'll set the bond viewport viz to geo. And you'll see that now the bonds are represented by this sort of slightly pinched or stylistic kind of representation here. So next I'd like to show you uh, some other ways that you can represent the structure as a whole. So I'm actually going to turn off atom viz. So uh, that turns off the atoms. And I'm going to set the bond viewport viz to none and bond rendering to none. So now we are just stuck to... Uh, Basically, the screen goes blank because there's no visualization for the atoms. So what I might do is I'll send the bond viewport viz to lines just so we can see where the structure is. So you're not afraid that it's actually disappeared or anything like that. So it's still in here. But I'm going to scroll down here and uh, all the way down to the alpha carbon backbone visualization. And this actually represents the molecule as a backbone or as a line that goes through the uh, overall structure. And this is another popular way to represent molecular structures. So if I turn on backbone viz, you can see that now there are tubes that go along the backbone of the main structure of the protein. But you'll also notice that the bond representation is still visible here. So this is an option that's available to you. you can, uh, use that visualization if you like. There's lots of different ways to combine different types of visualization within Molecular Maya. So I'm going to turn off, uh, scroll back up to atoms and set the bond viewport to none so we can just see the backbone here. And scroll all the way down to alpha carbon backbone. And uh, you, there's a few options in here you can play with. You can change the width of the tube and just like before with the uh, atoms you can choose these options for a single chain or all the chains. Um, you can also increase the uh, tightness of the fit to the original structure and then there's some presets here for the way that the uh, the uh, tubes are represented. So if I sit, click the medium you'll see that I get medium resolution, if I click high I'll get a high resolution and then I can do something like lower the tube width and so on and so forth. If I want to see the original wires, I can turn this on. So if I go to show, um, turn off NURBS surfaces, because the uh, backbone is actually a NURBS uh, tube that's been extruded, here are the original lines, the structure that goes through the, uh, through the uh, protein.